Hello and welcome back to Pro Tip of the Month from Crowd Droning by Globy. The video series where you, our amazing crowd droning pilot, gets to be the star of the show. By clicking the link in the description down below, you can submit your questions about drone mapping and the Crowd Droning by Globy platform. Now if you find the information in this video helpful, please tag us in social media at Globy and let us know how you incorporate your newly learned skills in your next gig for the chance to get featured in our social media. Now for this month we have received a ton of interesting questions from you guys and I would like to take a brief moment to thank you all for contributing with your questions. By doing this we learn so much more about you and how we can improve our documentation and platform structure. So, thank you. Now moving on to the question. For this month we will highlight a question from our crowd training pilot Antonio in Spain. Antonio is asking, Hi Team Globy, can you please explain the most important factors affecting the quality of a map and how to tackle those factors when planning for a mission? Now first of all, thank you for submitting your question Antonio and absolutely I'm happy to share my experience of what factors you should take care of when doing a mapping mission. Now to answer Antonio's question, we will be talking about photogrammetry and uh, also known as drone mapping and how it really works. We will also be talking about different types of surfaces, image overlap, flight altitude, ambient movement, angle of the sun and time of day, overcast weather conditions, available ambient light and flight speed, as well as different camera angles. Now if you haven't already seen our previous episode where we talked about best camera settings for mapping missions, I strongly recommend viewing that one as well to get a better overall understanding. A link to that video can be found in the description down below or by clicking in the upper corner of this video right now. Okay, so let's get started. To fully understand all the concepts we'll be talking about, we need to start with gaining a basic idea of how photogrammetry works. Now, photogrammetry is the process of drones flying in a pre-programmed pattern, taking a large number of overlapping 2D images. Because the images are overlapping, the same information can be seen in multiple images. Just like the human brain can process the input from our two eyes to create depth perception, there are powerful machine learning processing engines that can analyze every pixel of each image taken and tie it together with the same pixel from an overlapping image taken from a slightly different perspective. Through this concept, the processing engine can generate a 2D map or a 3D photorealistic -real model with real accurate measurements. But computers are never perfect and there are a few things we can have in mind when planning for a mapping mission to give the best chance of a successful outcome. First thing to be aware of is the characteristics of the surface. If the surface is very homogeneous, as shown in this example, the processing engine will have a hard time to find the same tie point in multiple overlapping images, and the software might not be able to output the desired map or model. To, to compensate for this, the most effective thing is if we can manipulate the surface to accommodate more unique features. And if we cannot manipulate the surface, our best chance is to fly higher and program the flight to have more overlap to give the processing engine as much overlapping information as possible to use for processing. Now let's stick to the topic of overlap. The more overlap we have, the more pixels the processing engine will have to work with, which is in general a good thing. But why don't we always want to have as much overlap as possible? Well, this is for practical reasons. The more overlap we have, 
the longer it will take to capture all the images and the longer they will take to process into a map. Notice in this example when we set a higher overlap that the flight time as well as the image count increases. When we fly over a high texture surface like in this example having that extra overlap will not necessarily improve the quality but it will for sure have us spend more time out in the field and waiting for the computer to process the images. A general rule of thumb is to have 75% forward overlap and 65% side overlap. Next thing we can do to affect the outcome of the map is to adjust what altitude we are flying at. For example, like we previously mentioned, it might be a good idea to increase the altitude if we are flying trying to map a homogeneous surface to include more information in the overlapping images. Although increasing the altitude gives the processing engine more information to work with, there is one major drawback. When we increase the altitude, we also get a lower overall resolution of the map, as you can see in this example, where we flew the same mission twice. Once at 50 meters, and once at 120 meters. The resolution we are referring to is often mentioned as ground sampling distance. Now choosing the right altitude for the given mission all depends on how much ground needs to be covered and the level of detail that needs to be seen. Now what time of day we fly might also affect the outcome of the map. For example if we are mapping a road at rush hour with a lot of moving cars. Each overlapping image will have a different scenario with the car in a different place, making it hard for the processing engine to find tie points between the overlapping images. Now in this case uh, we might see something we call ghosting, where parts of objects appear in random places. Flying at a time with less traffic will dramatically improve the outcome as you can see here where we map the same area with less traffic a second time. Keeping the subject of time, it is often best to fly in the middle of the day. When the sun is high up in the sky, this will produce less shadows on the ground creating a cleaner map or model. As an example, here you can see an image taken at 9am in the morning and then the same image taken in the middle of the day. But to get the absolute best outcome, it is always recommended to fly on an overcast day when there will be no shadows at all and the light in general is more even, giving more details in the parts of the map that would otherwise just be dark shadows. Now, when we program a mapping mission, we can choose the speed we want the drone to travel. In general, flying slower is better because, uh, because we avoid motion blur and ensure that we get sharp images. However, when we are covering large areas, we want to be effective and travel fast to cover a lot of ground in a short time. As you can see in this example, changing the speed can greatly affect uh, flight time and the total time we spend out in the field. Now, choosing the right speed takes a lot of practice and experience and care needs to be taken to ambient light conditions what altitude you are flying at, and what camera settings you are using. If you are not sure, we recommend that you check the image after each flight to make sure that they are sharp and clear. When taking images for mapping missions, we uh, usually have the camera pointed straight down. Sometimes we might have the camera at a slight angle to include more details of the side of an object. But one thing we never want to have included in the images is the sky. If we include the sky, we're including information that is too far in the distance and the perspective between the overlapping images will change too much, resulting in a distorted map or model. Here you can see an example uh, of the angle that are okay and the angles we want to avoid. When you go to process your image set, make sure to only include the images that are pointing straight down or at a slight angle and make sure to never include images that contains the sky. Now I hope this answers your question Antonio. 
For any further questions, please feel free to submit them by clicking the link in the description down below and we will make sure to answer them in an upcoming video. But until then, have a good one, fly safe and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.